staff, the financial aid staff, let us know what we can do to help. We are really excited to engage with you virtually um, or in person or both um, and uh, look forward to, uh, to talking with you. And now I have the great pleasure of uh, handing the mic over to one of my favorite people on campus, Director of Financial Aid, Shannon Amundsen, who's gonna talk with you a little bit about uh, financial aid um, and then we'll move on to the next thing. So Shannon, take it away. Thanks, Karen. Hi, everybody. Um, as Karen said, my name is Shannon Amundsen. I'm the Director of Financial Aid here at CC. Um, I've been doing this work for about 20, uh, 20 some years. Um, when you think about it like that, it's, it's longer than you think. Um, but I love what I do. Every single person in my office is committed to helping families um, figure out what's possible and doable for them. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about how CC does that um, in a way that is uh, hopefully gives you some clarity as you're starting your search process. Can we move this slide to the next screen? There we go. All right. So here at Colorado College, we believe that college education is a partnership, right? So the cost of college um, is can be really overwhelming. Uh, I know when I was looking at colleges many years ago, and even when I was looking for my daughter, it can seem really like, wow, that's a really big sticker price. But the key to that is that Colorado College meets 100% of demonstrated eligibility. And so there's about 70 schools in the country that do this. It's pretty rare in higher education. And frankly, one of the reasons I came to CC. Um, and so what that means, you can see in this graphic, we're trying to visually for some of you, and I'll talk through it for those of you who are auditory learners, our cost of attendance for this year that we're starting this fall is $79,562. That is total cost of attendance, tuition, fees, room, board, books, personal expenses, travel, right? So um, that's a really large number. We have a lot of families who can't afford to pay that. I know I certainly couldn't when I went to college. Um, and so the second number you'll see on the left here is 82379 Colorado College does require that students have health insurance that covers them in the state of Colorado. So if you're coming from outside the state, um, or if you're an international student who can't possibly have insurance that would cover them in the US, right? Um, you will be required to have health insurance while you're here on campus through the student health insurance um, plan. So that's why we have two separate numbers there. Then you go over to the columns that show on the right. And if you look at these, you can see that we do expect students to have work study. That means they work on campus to earn some wages to help pay their books or their personal expenses. We expect students who are able, international students are not eligible, to borrow student loans. We never offer more student loans than the federal student loans. So we don't expect any student to go into private student loan debt or to need a co-signer or anything like that. But we do include student loans as part of the package. And then you can see the need-based grant is the next one, the next piece of that puzzle. So work study and student loans doesn't change depending on how much your need is. If you're a student who has more need, we don't expect you to work more. We're not gonna treat you differently that way. Um, but we are going to have a different need-based grant, right? So the family on the left here has a lower expected family contribution. They have less resources with which to help pay the bill. The family on the right has a higher expected family contribution. And because of those differences, the need-based grant is going to be different. Now, either way, we're meeting the full eligibility of the family. Um, we just have a fam one family who has lower resources and one family who has higher resources. So the important piece there is it's a partnership. Now, this is not to say that any student has to work on campus or that any student has to borrow their student loans. We have many families who say, I don't want my student to work their first year, and so we're gonna pay that difference. We know that you're not gonna change your, your grant, but we're gonna go ahead and decline that work study. That's fine. Um, we have other students who their families don't want them to borrow loans, and so they will decline those student loans and either use outside scholarships or uh, you know, family resources to pay that bill. Outside resources are a way that a lot of our students 
pay those differences. Um, here at Colorado College, this is not true everywhere. So it's important for you to ask this question when you're out searching at schools. If a student does the work of finding outside scholarships, they are able to benefit from that. So what we would do if you're looking at these two families, if a student brings in an outside scholarship for $3,000, we're gonna reduce that family contribution. They're gonna be able to use that to reduce what they owe. That's gonna be our default. That's not true at every school. Some schools will reduce their grant money if you bring in outside scholarships. Here, we're gonna reduce that family contribution. If the student emails and says, hey, you know, I got this outside scholarship, my family doesn't wanna reduce their bill, they don't want me to borrow loans, so can you just take that loan off? We can do that too, right? So we have options. But our last resort will always be to reduce the need-based grant. We avoid that at all costs. The key is, federally, you can't receive more money than our cost of attendance. So if you come to CC, if you're admitted, and you say, hey, you know what, I got this package, my family, um, if I decline my loans and my work study, we owe $10,000. And then you go out and you get a $25,000 scholarship from an outside source, I can't give you all that money. That's just federal policy. It's not Shannon or Colorado College, right? Um, so we will work with every family if that is becomes an issue. It's pretty rare. Um, but just know that we're going to let you benefit as much as we possibly can from those outside scholarships if you are willing to put in the work of finding them. Um, the one thing I tell students all the time is not to wait until you find out where you're admitted, because if you do that, a lot of the outside scholarship deadlines have passed. If you're gonna be a senior this fall and you're looking at Colorado College and money is a concern, you should definitely be looking at those outside scholarships this summer, early this fall, because you'll see that a lot of those deadlines are gonna start coming up. So you can see there's a lot of different ways, you know, to, to make Colorado College affordable and how that's going to work out for your family with all the different buckets of, of aid, um, depending on the situation. Can we go to the next slide? Thank you. Um, so you can see here on the left, grants and scholarships, about 42% of our student body receives some sort of grant or scholarship from Colorado College. Um, we, we invest a significant amount of money, over 40 million a year into these types of funds. Um, so the college is committed to helping make the college affordable for those families who are admitted. You can see that our average student loan debt is $20,742. That is a four-year average for students who borrow student loans. The national average is somewhere around 25,000. So we're under the national average. And again, those are only federal loans. So we're never going to encourage a student to go into a private loan program, and we're certainly not going to award that for them. Um, $20,000 when you're done with school, the student loan payment is around $200. I'm round numbering things. Um, and that's the difference between a used car payment and a new car payment. There's no better investment than investing in your education. And I, I say that as somebody who borrowed student loans, my daughter borrowed student loans. I know that the national conversation is that student loans are bad. Um, but I will tell you that manageable student loans are not evil. Um, private student loans, I would tell you I never support a student borrowing those. Um, but federal student loans, it's a good investment into your future. Um, I know that without student loans, I never would have been able to get the education that I had, and I would not be sitting in this chair. Um, so again, something to keep in mind. Merit scholarships is a popular conversation. Colorado College invests five to $10,000 is our maximum for a student in merit scholarships. And around 10% of our admitted class, so think about that, right? If we admit about 15%, I know that's I think a little high, if we admit about 15% of our um, applicants and only 10% of those get a scholarship, um, we're talking a very small pool of merit-based funding. And that is intentional. The reason we're able to meet full financial eligibility, the reason we're one of those rare schools that does that is because we don't offer funding for merit. Students who get admitted to Colorado College are awesome students across the board. They've worked hard. They've all earned their place here. 
Um, we just, because we meet need-based um, eligibility, we choose not to focus our resources on financially rewarding that hard work. That hard work is rewarded when you get admitted. Um, and so it's important to note that for families who are comparing need-based scholarships at other schools to Colorado College, um, we should be right there. But if you get a merit-based award somewhere else, we're probably not gonna have the same sort of financial package. So just something to keep in mind. In addition to that, for merit scholarships, Colorado College is a mixed athletic institution. So for those of you who may be interested in athletics here at CC, we have uh, some division three sports. That's what most of our sports are. And we have division one sports. The division one sports are men's ice hockey and women's soccer. If you are working with a coach regarding one of those programs, they'll be working with you on what that means for you. If you're working with any other coach here at Colorado College and wanting to be an athlete while here, I just want you to know that there is not a monetary incentive there. We will meet full demonstrated eligibility, just like we do for every other student, but the NCAA has pretty clear rules about Division Three and what that means, and so we don't offer athletic money for those other sports. Student employment um, is about $2,100. That is our average award for our students. It's about five to seven hours a week, something I think is totally manageable and most of our students manage just fine. About half of our student body here on campus works. So if you're, if you're doing the math, if 42% of our students are here on grants, receive some sort of grant or scholarship and 50% of our students are working, you don't have to qualify for need-based work study in order to work here on campus. We have a lot of students who do different things from the sports center to athletic, or to admissions, tour guides, to uh, we have some financial aid interns in our office. Um, some students wanna work in the library. Some students work in facilities because they like to be outside and keep busy that way. There's a lot of opportunities here on campus. And so um, lots of students choose to work. Um, I will tell you, I think it's a great opportunity to build a resume, to be able to show your work experience, to build those soft skills um, that, that are really great on a resume, to be able to have those references. Um, I can tell you nobody grows up and says, I'm going to be the financial aid director of a college someday. I'm not even sure I knew that existed. Um, this was my work study job. It's turned out well for me, obviously. Um, I'm very happy. And so I just recommend that students seriously consider, even if you don't work your first year, do you wanna work after that? Because it really is a great resume builder. And um, I think there's a lot of things about it that are really positive. But most of our students use that to pay for their books. They pay for maybe their own spending cash. Um, they're not generally paying their tuition with that uh, based on the amount of $2,100. As you can see, that's not gonna make um, a $10,000 payment for the year, if that's what your family contribution is, but it would help so that you can manage your own finances here on campus as a student. What you work, what you earn is what you have to, to spend. So those are the big programs here in financial aid. Um, next, we're gonna talk about deadlines and things of that nature. So I think it's important to talk to students um, about their financial aid application because a lot of colleges handle things differently. So here at CC, we ask your financial aid application to be complete when you apply for admission. So what does that mean? A lot of schools, you will get admitted and then you fill out the FAFSA, then you turn in your paperwork, right? Pretty standard here um, in this country. If however, you're applying for admission at Colorado College, because we are need aware, we need all of that paperwork before you get admitted. So when you're looking at your admission application and you're saying, oh, well, I have a November 1 deadline for early action or early decision, that same deadline applies to your financial aid application. And so we wanna make sure that you understand and you're working with your parents to get us that information as you're going through the process and not afterwards. We do ask that people complete the CSS profile. Every student at CC completes that, both domestic and international. That is done online. If you search CSS profile, it'll be the first thing that pops up. If the student, you the student, has taken the SAT, 
The College Board login that you have will work for your CSS profile as well. If you don't have one, it's totally fine. You'll just set up your own account um, and start filling that out. I know everyone says that the CSS profile is a, a long document and, and it's um, not always the most fun thing. Uh, I will tell you the easiest way to do this is to sit down, parents and students together, and complete it and make sure that you have both parent and student taxes in front of you, along with W-2s and any investment statements if that applies. If you have all that pulled out already, you're gonna be in a much better place. You're gonna be able to say, oh, it's asking for line seven on the tax return. I've got that tax return. If you're trying to wing it without having those documents in front of you, it can be the most stressful thing I've ever tried to do. Um, and so I just wanna to tell you, right? Make sure you have everything ready. Parents and students sit down together, make sure that you've got all your passwords and you're ready to go. The next thing you're gonna fill out is the FAFSA. The FAFSA is done online as well. There is an app for that. Um, the federal government just released an app a couple of years ago um, that is a way for, for students to do that as well. When you're doing the FAFSA, you can release that, same as the profile, to as many schools as you'd like, but you need to make sure to have CC on there. There is no cost to the FAFSA, so you're going to be able to submit that. Um, no fee, no nothing. Those tax returns that you pulled out to do the profile, you're going to need them here too. And so make sure you have all those documents ready. If you are an international student, the FAFSA does not apply. If you are here in the US and are a green card or a permanent, permanent resident um, student or an asylum seeker that's been granted asylum, you will fill out the FAFSA. But if you are a true international student who does not have any other sort of status in this country, you will not do the FAFSA. So keep that in mind as you're deciding which paperwork you need to do. The other pieces are going to be the 2020 parent federal tax returns and W-2s. A couple of things I want to make sure to note here. These are for obviously people who are living in the U.S. If this applies to you, make sure that you upload all of the schedules. Don't pick and choose the pages that you send us. Send us the whole thing. That'll hold up a lot of students' application when we go through and review them. We will ask for the W-2s of the, that match those tax returns. So make sure you have those ready to upload as well. You can upload them in a PDF file or a JPEG file. It just kind of depends on what works best for the family. And you're gonna upload that through your, your portal here at CC. So if you do you know, a pre-application here at CC, it'll open up a portal for you. You're gonna get an email, it's gonna tell you how to log in, and it's gonna open up an opportunity for you to upload those forms whenever you want. So even if you continue to work on the, the Common App and you're not ready to submit that until the first, which totally makes sense, um, you're gonna be able to do the financial aid paperwork that you need to do without a problem. So. That's my little plug on doing the pre-application before the November 1st deadline, just to make it easier on you to fill out the paperwork um, that you need for financial aid, okay? So if you're a domestic student or living in this country, we're gonna ask for those tax returns. I don't list here the student tax returns because many of our incoming students don't have them. So I don't want that to be a stress for people. But if you do have them, make sure and upload those as well. Um, along with the W-2s. And then for our international students who are living abroad, we do ask for the 2020 Certificate of Income. If you look at our website, you're going to see that Certificate of Income that you can download on the financial aid website. It's going to ask for you to have your parent's employer fill it out, um, complete the form showing how much their income is, you can bypass that form if you file a tax return in your home country. Um, you can submit your tax return, a translated copy, um, along with that, if you please. Uh, I'm, I'm very good at many things, but translating from all the languages in the world, um, not my specialty. So if you want to upload your parents' tax return with a translated copy, that might save you a step if you have a, if you have a tax return in your home country. Um, if your parents are self-employed, 
we need something showing their income. And so that could be, uh, like I said, a tax return that they file. It could be a bank statement showing deposits that they've made in their bank account from their self, their, their job work. Um, but we need something showing what they're living on. So I just wanna make sure that that's out there um, so that you're aware of that. The other thing that holds up a lot of families is gonna be the non-custodial parent. If you are a student who is living in a household with one of your legal parents and not the other, um, and what I mean by legal parent is birth parent, adoptive parent, whoever your legal parent is, if they are not living in the same household, Colorado College does ask for the non-custodial parent um, FAFSA or profile and tax returns. So think about that. If you're applying to CC and you know that your non-custodial parent hasn't been in your life for a decade, um, for whatever that reason is, whether it was abuse, um, we have seen um, families where it's um, a drug abuse issue, it could be a physical abuse issue, there's lots of reasons. And we're not here to sit in judgment on any of those things. All we want to know is why are you not sending us hit that person's, that non-custodial parent's to paperwork, if that is what you're choosing not to do. Um, so we have an application for a non-custodial parent waiver. You can also find that on our website. So once you complete that waiver form and upload it to your portal as well, we'll review it and look at it um, and let you know if we still need something or if what you submitted is enough for us to waive that paperwork. One key piece to that non-custodial parent paperwork is that we do not look at a parent's willingness to pay. We look at whether or not you're able to get the forms. So if there's a safety issue or a parent who is, um, you know, in prison, things, there's all sorts of reasons that a family couldn't get the paperwork. But if the answer is my parent doesn't want to pay for college, that would not be a reason we would approve the, the parent and non-custodial parent waiver. So that's a short overview of how things work for financial aid. Again, a couple of action items. Make sure you know what your deadlines are when you're applying to CC. The sooner you can fill out that Colorado College pre-application, which will open your portal, the sooner you can start submitting things to us and making sure that everything is ready for you on those deadlines. Um, so that's my personal little plug for that, just to make sure that your stuff is turned in. Um, and if you run into questions or concerns, or you're not sure how to send, uh, send something or what it is we're asking for, always call. In the busiest times around November 1st, it might take us a couple of days if you email us to get back to you. Um, we do answer on a first come first serve basis. We're doing the very best we can, but sometimes just due to volume, it might take us 48 hours. Um, or give us a call again, leave a message, we'll call you back. Don't do both, um, that holds us up, but whichever one you do, we will get back to you. And we are happy to help you as you're working through the process. We know this can be stressful. We don't want it to be stressful. It is something we are happy to answer for you before it becomes an anxiety ridden experience because you're gonna be doing it for four years. So we wanna to try to help upfront. Um, so give us a call. Our contact information is on the website. Again, you can email as well. Many people prefer to communicate that way and we're happy to do that as well. So we're here. Um, be sure to turn in your pre-application, submit all your documents by the deadline. And if you have any questions, um, let us know. And don't forget to be applying for those outside scholarships to help reduce your costs, okay? So that is my uh, information.